This is the third section of the graphs networks chapter and here we're going to be looking at special types of graphs, uh, trees, spanning trees, complete graphs and isometric graphs. So the first thing we're looking at is a tree. Now a tree is a connected graph with no cycles. Okay, so connected means that there's a way of getting to every vertex. So this would be an example of a tree. But as soon as I add this edge here, it's no longer a tree because I have this cycle like this. So by taking that away, now it becomes a true tree, a connected graph with no cycles. OK, so next thing we can look at is this spanning tree. It's a subgraph that includes all the vertices of a graph and is also a tree. Now, if it includes all the vertices and it's a subgraph, that means it doesn't include all the edges. And if it's also a tree, it means that there can't be any cycles. So if I start with this graph, there are currently cycles in it. So A, B, C, for example, uh, B, C, E, for example. So there are cycles there. So I want to remove edges so that it becomes a tree. Um, so every uh, edge or every vertex needs to be connected, but I want to make sure that there are no cycles. So I think by removing those edges, this now becomes what we call a spanning tree. So all of the vertices have been included. I haven't taken any of the vertices out. I've just taken the edges out to ensure that there are no cycles, but yet every vertex remains connected. This is just one example of a spanning tree. I could, for example, have removed different edges to get different spanning trees. So I could put these edges here. So this is also a spanning tree. So there's more than one way of doing it. So I could remove that, for example, and have this as a spanning tree. So now we move on to complete graphs. And in a complete graph, every vertex is connected to every other vertex. So you can see some example here. So three vertices, they're all connected to each other. So I can get to any other vertex from one vertex. Here's the same if I've got four vertices. I can get to any other vertex straight away without having to go indirectly another route. And here's an example here where I've got five vertices. Now, because these are used quite often in um, this topic, they're given special names. So these ones here, you can see K and then three just talks about the number of vertices, the, the little number down here. So for um, n vertices, a complete graph is k sub n. And lastly, we're going to look at isometric graphs. These are graphs which show the same information, but they're just drawn differently. So these two graphs here are isometric. They actually represent the same information, but drawn in different ways. So for example, I can match up vertex W with vertex A, which has an all, um, a valency of one. That's connected to a vertex here that has a valency of three, that would be B. And then you can see B is connected to two other vertexes or vertices that have a valence of two. So this one and this one. So this is the same information as this. So for two graphs to be isometric, they need to have the same number of edges, which these do, the same number of vertices, which they do, and each of the each vertex must have the same uh, valency or degrees, which they do. So these graphs here are isometric. You should now be able to do exercise 2C on page 40. So just make sure that you know these definitions. So you know what a tree is, what the definition for that is. You know what a spanning tree is. So what's the difference between a tree and a spanning tree? Also, a complete graph. What complete graphs are. And know the notation uh, K3, K4, so on. Kn, know what that means. And also, 
how you can tell if graphs are isometric.